Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC, we do everything DIY and today we have a new building where we're going to be performing a combustion analysis using the UEI C161. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we're working on three Lars hydronic boilers. We're gonna be performing the preventive maintenance and along with that, we're gonna be performing a combustion analysis using the UEI 6161. This is a new tool that I picked up and we're gonna check out these boilers to see what's going on. I opened up this bottom cover over here on boiler number one. Currently I have the power set to off. As you can see, the switch is down. Inside here, this is a burner section. You can see some dirt build up back there, so definitely time for maintenance, so that's a good call on them. Now our gas valve, a couple controls. Anyways, this is a Lars Mighty Therm water heater. So this is being used for their showers and sinks for nine floors. So it seems like there's no zones or anything. It's just, well, if anything, there's one zone. All these three boilers work in conjunction together. As if you look at the piping, they are all piped in together. And then there looks like there we also have a, a circulating pump booster, which pumps that throughout the building, even though we do have a pump on each unit. I just want to look at the tag here. I'm going to send you guys a picture. Excuse me, show you guys a picture so you guys can see these readings. A couple of things we should know. The date of manufacture is actually pretty old, but it looks like it's in decent shape. It is June 19th, 2012. It's a date of manufacture. Who knows when it got put in? I'm assuming sometime around there. If we look at our gas pressures, it says the maximum permissible gas supply pressure is 10 WC. That's inches in water column. Minimum is six inches of water column. That's gonna be on the inlet side of our gas valve where gas is coming through here. So we should have anywhere minimum six, maximum 10. Then let's see, the manifold pressure is important to look at. And it's actually at four inches of water column. That's why you always gotta check. Rule of thumb for a lot of units is 3.5, but it says four, we need four here. So we're definitely gonna wanna do a check and a test for our gas pressure. And let's see, combustion efficiency. Where are we? This is right here, thermal efficiency. This is a 80% efficiency boiler. In this video, we're gonna focus on combustion analysis only. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see here, we have a natural draft. Okay. We don't have a motorized damper or any motors in there or anything like that. So it's just a natural draft. We're gonna start with making a hole inside this pipe here. Rule of thumb from what I know is that you should be anywhere from six to 12 inches away from the unit. So somewhere around here will be fine. Here's our tool, this is pretty awesome. We got a magnet on here. And here's our probe, we gotta set it up. This little red piece, I know we are gonna connect right in here and then this can use two temperature probes. T1 is temperature one, T2 is temperature two, but I just don't see which, how this goes exactly because there's a positive negative on this K-type thermistor. It's temperature input. Let's see, is there one that shows anything? I'm gonna go with the one with, one side says K, so I'll assume that's just the front and I'm gonna try it. If we have like very strange temperatures, we'll know it's backwards, I guess. So here's our probe. And let's connect this one over here. 
No, we're good. And there we go. We're all set up here. This unit comes with a certificate of calibration, so we know we're good. We also have a USB, and that's because this is a rechargeable unit. Comes also with instruction manual. It says before using, register your analyzer. It says register within 30 days of purchase to get 10% off your first year calibration. And I bought this a lot longer than 30 days ago and I never used it. So it's about that time. Finally, buildings are approving things. Comes with a list of instructions. I'll take some pictures so you guys can see. All right, let's get started. When we drill out a hole in here, we want it to be slightly larger than here so we could actually adjust this little cone in here that will keep it stabilized. So this is slightly larger and I'm gonna use that as my hole. You don't wanna drill through there, you wanna drill through here. You want six to 12. This entire piece is 16. So let's say about right here is good to go i'll even put it at seven let's get that in there that's pretty nice and that can stay as is okay so technically they want you to purge this in fresh air we're outside we're gonna hold the power button for two seconds nice it's turning on you see purging 60 second countdown let's let that be okay looks like we're ready to go we have our function set here i don't even know what that symbol is but how over here we're all this is our main menu where we can make uh, adjustments let's go inside and test our unit all right, we're back at the boiler. I got my hole right there. Should be a safe place to keep it at. And let's turn this bad boy on. Set to 150. Let's see if we get a flame. Okay. And then we have different settings. Aux, flu one, flu two, and then temp really want to get a good reading at about five to ten minutes also there's multiple stages right you're gonna to want to get a reading at both stages so right now let's check flu one let's give it some time pump is running it's starting to go and let's see it with this let this thing average out and see what we get it's been about a minute or two but i made a little cheat sheet here we got to know what everything is so right now o2 excuse me co2 which is carbon dioxide it is 5.6 percent o2 is at zero percent o2 is oxygen efgc is going to be our efficiency specifically efficiency gross calculation it's at 84.5 percent i look this is an 80 percent efficient boiler so we're almost there a little bit up there t1 temperature one right here is going to be our temperature of our stack it's at 338 degrees seems normal at the moment t2 there's no reading because i only have one probe attached to the to the unit let's move it to flu two what we really want to know is our CO, which is carbon monoxide. It's currently set at, we have 22, 22 parts per million, and that's actually okay. So let's see, I made some notes over here as far as carbon monoxide. That's the main thing you really want to know. So below 50, you're good. At 100 parts per million, you're gonna probably wanna check it out. 
but you are good and it's acceptable at a 200 parts per million maximum according to Ahri, which is A-H-R-I. I'll show you guys a picture of that. So it also depends what temperatures of your flu, what exactly, uh, what kind of system you have. If it's natural draft, it's gonna be higher than something with a forced draft. But, okay. Let's see what we got here. Whoops. Loss is gonna be heat loss calculation. It is at 15.8%. And it shows excess air calculation, X air, it's at 0%. So honestly, this is running pretty good, in my opinion, especially with that CO. We're doing running pretty clean. I also tested my manifold pressure. I made that in a separate video where we check the gas pressures and we're pretty much almost right about spec i want to take some pictures of our calculations here and what we're going to do is make a work order and leave the file here and you should really do your little annual inspection and you know really make sure everything's okay everybody's safety is is affected here all right, the covers are back on. We gave it a few minutes. In the end, our CO2 is 6.5%, O2 0%, which that's not good, man. No oxygen. Our efficiency is at 84%, we're rated for 80. Our temperature is 352.9 degrees, which is pretty good. Carbon monoxide slightly went up to 30 parts per million. CO2 is at 6.4%, loss is at 15.8%, X air, excess air is at 0%. Honestly, why do we not have air in here, man? <laughs> There's no air. I wonder, let's see what's going on. Is this our fresh air intake? Oh, I could feel fresh air. It's just wide open. There is air and oxygen should be coming in through here. Our flame is blue, it's nice. Our gas pressure is set correctly. So everything is pretty much where it should be. In the end, I turned off our boiler, pulled out our probe, and the hole that we made, I put high temperature aluminum tape. Some people might wanna put some high temp silicone in the hole and then the tape above, but this is just fine. You're good to go. A couple of things you should maybe take note of is the O2, your oxygen should be eight to 12% as normal. Our CO below 50 is good. Above 200, you got a problem, but really above 100, you might wanna take a look into it. And your CO2, your carbon dioxide should be four to 8%. And yeah, that's my little, my little cheat sheet here. This is for something else, this was for a different jobs. I was just preparing myself, but that is how we do a combustion analysis. And this is a really, really great tool. We got two more to go. We're checking gas pressures, doing our annual tune-up and doing the analysis for the first time in this building. They've not, never done it before. It was never part of their maintenance, which is just a shame. You know, we're vacuuming everything out. We got our air compressor. We're blowing out everything, making sure burner too. Everything is clean, but I hope you guys found this video valuable and we're gonna wrap it up here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, let's drop a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you all next time.